to bear with us as uh, yes, yes, I'm sure he's on the way and probably our outstanding physical security procedures uh, were a deterrent. So try to bear with us. We, we, have no, uh, we have no video in this room. We don't have any entertainment to show you. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Hey, it works now. Look at that. Uh, I'm Michael Glasser. I'm an access control specialist. Well, oh, say I am. I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, right now, I'm a manufacturer's rep for a bunch of different access control and security lines out of New Jersey. Uh, we do a lot of work in New York. Uh, I'm a manufacturer's rep, so I don't actually do installations. But if anyone has questions at the end, I can refer you to good people. On my left is Isaac, and he's Isaac. Hi. And he's Isaac. I, he, I get to play Vanna White today. Yeah. He goes, ooh. That one we're not up to yet. Huh? No, the other black case. The other black case? The other, other black case. Okay. That's the special toys later. Ooh. Hey, water. We love him. Clap. Everyone. Thank you. Okay. First thing is access control is why you have it. More than access control, you've got to go back to the beginnings. You have a door. Why do you have a door? To keep people in and out. Sense. You have a building, you want to keep people in and out of the building. So you have to secure the door. It used to be a key was good. So you put your key in the hole, you turn the thingy, it goes open, and everybody's happy. Then people started going with master key systems, which was also good because you put the key in a thing, and then you could use two keys or ten keys, depending on what you need to do. Anyone here know about master key systems? Raise your hand, be special. Oh, look, oh, wow, that's good. Okay, so basically, for anyone who doesn't know, master key system is just one key that can control multiple locks, uh, where you would have different levels of supervisory. You would have a user key, then perhaps a supervisor key, then a maintenance key, then you would have the master key that would work all the buildings, et cetera, et cetera, basically broken down, not going into details. Sure. Uh, what he's saying down front, what was your name? What Mark was saying is that uh, a lot of people think if two keys or two locks work on the same key, that's master keyed. That is a master keyed. What that means is that they're keyed alike. Just all the pins inside are built the same. A master key system where it could be that one lock can work two separate keys completely, two totally different keys. Grab the mic. For example, you might have, let's say, a hotel where you might have a floor master for the maid for each floor. You might have a grandmaster, like a great grandmaster, or any door in the entire building can be open with another key. And you might have a key for the janitor that only opens all the janitor's closets on each floor. That would be one possible way of doing it. But there's all kinds of combinations. Essentially, you have multiple pins in each stack, and you, and you can have, and you can pretty much set up anything you want. The downside, of course, is is more wear and more chances of somebody picking a lock because there's so many more possible shear lines that'll open it. All that stuff he said, he's right. So anybody who knows about locks, that stuff's right. Anybody who doesn't know about locks, go to the lock picking panel tomorrow. And then you'll know more about locks. Barry. Okay. Well, with Barry, as he said. So now you've got a door, you've got a lock on it. Good. You start having a lot of users, and oh, that's just a power supply. You don't need to show that one. Everyone's seen a plug-in transformer, right? Back in Nintendo? I sell those, too. Good ones. So, I don't know where I was. Okay, you have a door you need to secure, and then some guy decided electricity is cool, so he decided to make access control systems, because he thought it was more secure than a lock you could pick, or key control, you can't break a key anymore, all that good stuff, which realistically, anything can get broken, but it's more expensive, it's more cool, and I can sell it to all of you. And therefore, we have access control. First thing I'm gonna show you is basic, 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 basic access control. A keypad. Why a keypad? Because you don't have to have a card, you don't have to have a key, you don't have to have anything. You walk up to it, you go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and you walk through the door, and if it works. And if you put in the wrong code, it doesn't work. Those are keypads. Can you stand this stuff up at all? No. Yeah, they're flat. Doing the Vanna White thing, and you didn't even notice it. We love Isaac. He's so grand. This is great. Well, let's go down some keypads real quick. The keypad line I'll be showing is called IEI. Uh, <laughs> 
See why we bring him? Yeah. No, no that's terrific. I love that. Okay. IEI. IEI is international something something. Um, I worked for them. I really should know. Uh, but nobody's ever asked me that before. I probably shouldn't have suggested it. Um, I'll show you that later. So IEI is International Electronics Incorporated. And uh, I think. And uh, they make keypads, and they make access control systems, and now they make a standalone door lock, which couldn't fit in my car because I ran out of room. And mostly their focus is access control uh, hardware, such as keypads and proximity readers, mag stripe readers, smart card readers, um, uh, backlit keypads, control panels to control it all. So first thing we'll do is keypads. I just said that about 12 times, but that's the second thing. This is the 212i, 212i. Probably, I'd have to say, everyone in the whole world who does access has used this. It might be a little bit strong assumption, but it's pretty much close. An IEI 212 keypad, or 212i, looks like this. You screw it on a single gang box, and you wire some stuff in it, and there's a wiring harness, and you, you crimp it with your thing, and it works. Basically what this does is it's a switch with a keypad built in. It stores up to 120 users, you punch in your code, and it opens the door, or it accesses whatever you want. If you go into Home Depot, and you go over to their big saw with the cross-cut saw, and you walk up and you see one of these, punch in one, two, three, four, star, and now you can do your own cuts. Because that's 90% of Home Depot guys go, one, two, three, four, star, hey. Don't think it's Home Depot guys, the guy who installed it never programmed it. But uh, that's the 212, all it is, it's true. It's well, the, the alternative right. is the Home Depot guy writes the code on the thing or scratches it in, no matter what it is. Well, talk to the, the, uh, say, the uh, lock picking, yeah. saw that on a bank vault. Really? Yes, I was doing a vault job with a friend of mine, saw it on a bank vault. That's really sad. I know, it was great. It was terrific. <laughs> yeah, which, which bank? That's Good question. Good. He asked which bank. I'm not answering that one. The bank with the money. How about that now? So 212, they make three different... Oh, sure. Uh, it has a switch relay built into it. Uh, next one will have a relay out or an output. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play dumb. Why does that matter? <laughs> it's more gooder. -er. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no. Well, actually, I don't know. realistically, I, I don't know. I've never had a need for it. I've read through the whole manual probably about a hundred times. You generally wouldn't use this for an alarm keypad. This would be more of an access keypad. And this wouldn't be used on the door if done correctly. That's what I was about to get up to. This is the 212i. Like I said, it's just a switch. If you unscrew these two screws out, you can short the wires and open the door. And that's the reason why it matters. Yeah, okay. I was getting there. I was getting there. I was getting there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly, that's why the 212i is the one that a lot of guys use and shouldn't be used. Yes, Bernie. I uh, saw a keypad uh, a couple years ago in an office I was considering renting for my company. Uh, that office had previously just been uh, vacated by FEMA and uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency. Uh, there were some secure areas there that were obviously no longer secure since they vacated it. The keypad to the, uh, to the IT center was uh, very interesting. I'd never seen one before like that. Each, it was uh, like a virtual keypad. It was uh, each, of the, uh, each of the digits was a you know a regular seven segment LED, right? Uh, which changed as you uh, every every time you entered the code, it would it would rearrange the digits for you. And in front of each of those digits was a was a like a frontal lens kind of arrangement, only with just the vertical polarization. So you had to be right in front of this thing to see uh, to see what the digits were. So that's like an extra layer of security. So the arrangement of the keys always changed. Right. And. Uh, who may, I can't remember who made the thing. Have you ever seen that before? Who makes it? And I've never seen it. I've never heard of it, but it sounds really cool. Well, really, really, really cool. It's... Yeah. But, but the, the advantages of a system like that is that if you're happening to be escorting someone around a building and 
you're, you know, you're using these keypads to walk through doors, the person only, only has to look at your finger and says, ooh, it's in the upper left, that must be a one. You know, ooh, it's in the lower right, that must be a nine, and can figure it out that way. The other advantage is that in a very high traffic situation, the numbers will wear off those keys, which I'm sure, we're all hackers here, we kind of know how to look at these sorts of things. So, you know, if, if the numbers two, four, seven, and five are missing, what are the chances that two, four, seven, and five are somewhere in this code? So that's now two to the four, I mean, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. Very well, true, very true. Well, hopefully the thing will short out before it's a big problem. Okay, I haven't seen that one personally. Uh, well, this one is just the eye model, indoor, basic keypad. Uh, I'm going to go up to a secure one now because Bernie mentioned it was going out of order, but why not? <coughs> now, you normally wouldn't need it to rest because you wouldn't really use this in that situation. Took it already. Oh. You were talking? Now, come back, come back. We miss you. Yeah. True. I recognize what a duress code is going to do. It's going to inform someone who recognizes it that something is going wrong under the right conditions. But if you're at an, unmod in a, an unmonitored facility and all you're doing is trying to protect a door to, say, a data center, there's not going to be some guy sitting there all day long looking for it. Certainly, and page someone else, but at that point, it's a, well, regardless. Okay. Go Keypad that turns stuff on or off, it's just a switch. All it is is a switch, it's not for security. It's not for anything but a switch. I put these on doors in inside of office buildings because that way the cook couldn't get to the other cook's stuff. It's not for security. It's not for anything but just a switch. There's three different families. Well, and four now, but we don't know about the other one yet. The, um, the 212s, the 232s, and then the security series. 212 is just a switch, 232, is a keypad that's standalone, but it has an inside brains. So if you rip the keypad off the wall, you can't short it out. It won't do anything. It basically transmits a signal to the inside brains. And secured series is just a standalone keypad that has an output for the brain somewhere on the building. But we'll get to that in a little while. So this is the eye. Inside usage. Sticks on a single gang box. Does its job. Everybody loves them. You'll see them everywhere around the city. Good stuff. I'm going to go out of order now. Now, any of these keypads can be ordered in any of the three families, 212, 232, or secured series. So anything you see here, I don't know which one it is. You can't really tell by looking at it. Different circuitry. Actually, this one you can because there's no relay in the back. But uh, that's the only way, as far as I know. And this goes down. I'm helping. Now we're going to jump out of order. And we're going to go to uh, one of the secured. This is called the Q15. Q15? Yeah, Q15. It looks like that. Unless you power it up, you're not going to see anything. Uh, are you trying to zoom? Zoom. Zoom. Yep. If you look real close, it's got a, I'm going to pronounce this wrong because I always do, and Bernie's going to correct me in the back. Uh, piezoelectric buttons here, so there's no actual moving parts. You hit it with a hammer, it laughs at you. And there's a hardened uh, plexiglass, Lexan, super ultra great plastic from somewhere. I don't know about plastic. I'm not, that's not my job. I just know it's hard. And you can't break it. And inside here, you get a little readout. A little eight thing read out, and it turns on and shows you a number. And if you want to go up, you push the thing that says up. If you want to go down, you push the thing that says down until you get to the number you need and you hit enter. I think everybody's probably seen that somewhere on something. And once you get all four of your digits, you hit open, and guess what? It sends a signal and the door will probably open if it's the right signal. So that's the secure one. It, instead of something where the numbers would constantly rotate, that way they can't tell unless they're right in front what the number is. And you can hit up and down and up and down, and they're not going to know what you're doing unless they can see how fast your finger moves. And since this doesn't move at all, they can't really see how many times you're pushing it unless they're really good, like some of the people here probably, at which point you just tell them to look the other way. And that's what this is for. Isaac. I'm helping. Yeah, that works like a neuralizer too. You just go, whoa. And none of you guys remember, though. I have to do this all again. And uh, like I said, all these keypads can be in any of the forms. Uh, somebody keep me updated on time when I'm getting to, like, 15 or 20 minutes in. It's 20, 20 minutes, minutes in? in. Yeah. Oh. We're going to go faster now because I figured we wouldn't be able to fill an hour, but evidently I could hit like seven hours now. So we'll go faster. <laughs> this big thing here is the R for ruggedized. It's a brick. It's heavy. It's metal. It's got a keypad. It's a brick. I'll throw it at you. It'll, you'll go out. It's a brick. 
It's made for outside use. Uh, you put these on those little goosenecks uh, when you're going to drive them with a truck and you have to hit that thing at your window, you put this there. Then you hit the thing and if you hit it with the truck, it doesn't break. That's what this is for. You can also put this on a wall where there's vandalization. Um, only way to vandalize this as far as I know, one, a uh, fire won't really affect it. I mean, real fire will, but a uh, lighter to this won't hurt it. But if you super glue the buttons, stop that. <laughs> if you super glue the buttons, that'll stop this. If you paint over the buttons, everybody still knows it's a telephone keypad. Yeah, everybody can still close their eyes and go one, two, three, four, five, six, star bound. They got right. And uh, that's the R. Isaac. This is the XT. Extremely tough. They were smart. <laughs> Once again, no moving parts. Hit it with a hammer, it laughs at you. Unless you hit the LED. If you hit the LED, the LED breaks. Them. But it doesn't matter, it'll still work. No moving parts. You push the thingy, it goes, it's a buttons. We have to vandalize this. Now, none of you do vandalization. That's really not nice. I'm serious, don't do that. That's Did not you nice. you make money on that? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> what? It'll scratch it. And if you get a really big razor blade, it can go through stainless steel, maybe. If you, if you take a drill to it, that'll damage it. If you take a hole saw to it, or probably some kind of acid, I don't know much about that, though. No, no, that is metal. You're more than welcome. To, actually, I have a class to go on the show after. I personally think it's a piece of crap, but luckily they're phasing it out ever since I called them up and told them it's a piece of crap. But whatever's still installed, that's good. Or you can buy no one. So no moving parts, the XT, and uh, that's damn good uh, keypad. This was what I was going to do second normally. This is the one with the plastic face. It's a plastic membrane. I personally think this is a crap, and the co company fired me for saying that. Um, oops. But uh, I don't like it. It wears out if you poke with your pencil that you pulled off your ear instead of using your finger like a lot of people do. You get holes in it. It wears out. It breaks. But the ones that are existing, I've seen one that was in for 10 years. The guy called me up and said, oh, can we just replace the membrane? And I looked at him and said, you're about seven years overdue for that thing breaking. <laughs> this thing is a very good keypad for what they had. It was cheap. It was good. You could put it outside. It was weatherproof because of the plastic. I wouldn't suggest using it anymore. Now we have a new weatherproof keypad. That looks like an old Intellivision controller. We got good toys. SE, big heavy box, telephone buttons, yay, does the same thing. Super glue, uh, black magic marker, and that's that. Gotta go faster, run out of time. I brought lots of toys. If I don't get to show them all, I'm gonna be pissed off. This is the uh, ILW, illuminated back, click keys, extremely. Oh, the lights went down. Extremely, um, extremely hardened plastic buttons. What that means is you can hit it with a hammer to laugh for you. But the second Isaac gets that lighter he was going for before, they, they, they'll get torched. They won't really melt, but they'll, they'll get effed up. Luckily, it's still the same configuration. One, two, three, star pound. You know? And uh, same thing. You can get it in the inside, the outside, etc. IL or ILW. Inside is IL. Outside is IL. Weatherproof. W. How are we doing on time? 24 minutes in. Ooh. 24, I'm doing pretty good. MP, made of effing plastic. <laughs> These are used in Europe all the time. They're terrific keypads. They've got the hardened plastic buttons. Not vandal proof at all. Hold it up. Come on, take a picture. Um. Oh, I am so beautiful. <laughs> hardened plastic buttons. You should have got Isaac. He's so much better than me, though. Um, that was serious. I like you. You're nice. Smile. Be Vanna. Come on. Do the Vanna thing. Yeah. There we go. A plastic. Not really vandal resistant. It's good. It's cheap. They use a lot of them in Europe from what I've heard. According to the IEI guy. I've never been to Europe. I wouldn't know. Wish I did. Anybody want to take me? I put out. <laughs> anyway. So it's the MP. It's good. It's plastic. It does its job. Not to Isaac though. Hey. It's full apart. The screw's missing. Oh, okay. This one is the same thing that has screws. Okay, that didn't fall apart. Oh, the other one was the IL, this one's the ILW. Difference being that the back is uh, 
it, uh, what's that word, hermetically? Herme what? Yeah, it's, it's probably in a, a hard rubber actor so you can take it off to uh, fix it. But um, it's hermetically sealed would be, I think that's the word I'm looking for. I don't know. Yes? Quick question. If the uh, client ends up losing those uh, code numbers, is there a maintenance code on every one of those products? There are codes for everything if you program them in. Initially, your factory code is one, two, three, four, star. If you don't take that out, I'm going to have to make fun of you. Uh, other than that, anything you don't program in is not in there. There is no factory bypass codes. Um, if you rip it off the wall, you're not going to get very far with the secured series. Your best bet is to go through the back door and uh, power it down. When you power back up, there is a way to get back into the master code on power down and power up. Most of these systems do have uh, battery backup. Is that uh, only from the actual brain unit or from the front panel where it's powered down and up? Depends on which uh, model you're using. On like the, uh, the 212 series, which is the standalone one, it's you short a couple of wires. If you know which one to do, you power it up. It's in master programming mode. On the, uh, I'm not telling you which, it's in the manual if you buy it. <laughs> um, on the, uh, the Hubmax panel, which I'm going to get to, there's also ways to do it that way. That's all software, though. This is the thing I was trying to run the badges through, but I didn't have the right software. The MagStripe reader. And I don't know what's on here yet, but we'll find out. I was told that to do it. I don't believe them. And if so, I want to program my key onto here. What? 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 No, no, I don't, I don't have the software that's made to input. That's made for only the access control products that this works with for their cards. Everybody's got different formats. The standard is Wigand, and then there's another one ABA, but I'm not getting into that detail. I do not know the details. I honestly don't. Yes, all this stuff comes with the proper stuff you need. That has a, a, an ABA output you plug into the Hubmax panel, and then blah, 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 and not get into details. Now we'll get up to that in a minute. The ILW. Oh, wait, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, true, but you can use MagStripe to activate a weekend output. No, no, a weekend is a type of card, but a weekend output is like an RS-232 output. It's a data, it's a data transfer uh, method over a line, as far as I know. And those are usually going to have a weekend output. Uh, there's, it's, oh, I'm ringing. Hey, who's this? Oh, voicemail. Uh, as far as I know. And I've done it for a bunch of years, but some people out here probably sit in the back and sit there going, <laughs> who knows a lot more than me. So if they are, please raise your hand. And you're sitting in the front, you seem to know a hell of a lot, so that's good. Uh, Weekend originally was some old guy who designed the system, and they had Weekend cards, which when you stri swipe the card would produce a Weekend output. Yes. What was his name? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's the tech. It's the technology that made it work. The problem is there are two things that are considered weekend that I know of. The card type was a weekend card, and the output was a weekend output. You can use a mag stripe, a keypad, or anything to produce a weekend output. But they're talking about the weekend cards. Uh, I honestly, I've read the book on it. I've seen the cards. I've seen the cutaways of the cards. To me, it, it's just a different, different way to do the same thing. Different way to input. Could be prox, could be mag, any of those things are just different ways to do the same thing. Yes? Very true. Uh, you could be systems just by making your own and sticking things in x-ray machines and all kinds of things just to copy it. But, uh, I, yeah. Here's the microphone, please. Can you not hear me? The other guy. Oh. The other guy. Oh, basically what he said, <laughs> basically what he said is because of the way Weekend worked originally, and I don't know if this is true or not, um, he says so, I believe it, I just personally don't know if it still is true, is the way Weekend worked was it basically was a picture of metal, and when you put it up, it read the picture, so you could take an x-ray machine, take a picture of that, take a piece of wire and draw that picture on another piece and paste it on. Yeah. Oh, mullion keypad for those thin-walled aluminum doors. Really, really tough, really, really good, and it looks cute too, I like it. Half an hour. Okay, we're almost done with the AI then. That big boxy thing, open it up and show it to them, please. All right. Thank you. Boxy thing. That's called the Mini Max. It's an access control controller. Uh, that's made for one door. It can integrate into a system of up to 32 doors, 500 users per door, 10,000 users maximum. And that's the Mini Max. Very, very easy to use for anyone who is not familiar with access control, who doesn't do big, big systems. I would suggest something along these lines. 
The two uh, setbacks, which I personally don't consider setbacks, just different applications need different things. Come on, keep doing that, Isaac. That looks good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, one, it doesn't have badging. What badging is, is I think at the first Hope conference, I wasn't at the first one, they had put picture ID badges. And if you took that, yeah, take a picture of that, not me. And if you took that badge and you want to integrate into the software to print out all the badges with all the access control information, our system can't do that. Our system isn't designed to do that. It's for small applications, small offices where you don't require that. It also doesn't have what's real-time alarm management. So you can't click on the door and open the door. You can't click on the door and see its status. It'll print a constant log out of what everything is, but you can't just click a door and open it. You'd have to walk over the door with your card and swipe it. Uh, that's only really, well, there's, I mean, you guys can figure out what it's useful for. That's the Minimax. As I said, there's also the Hubmax, which is a four-door module uh, version of this. That's the one door. The little module pulls out. And one quick thing before you close it. See that little keypad in there? Pull that straight out. Can you do that without putting it down? Oh, cool. Okay, this can be controlled by software, but you can also do programming via keypad. The keypad in Isaac's hand comes out. So if you don't give the customer software and you don't give them that little keypad that just came out, they can't mess it up. Unless they try really hard. True. So if they can't mess it up, you're happy. But most of the time, you're going to give them the software and let them do their own administration, so they call you 10 times a day saying, I hired a new guy, I want to add him in. How? If, that's great. Service call every single time. Every new guy you hire, right there. And that's the uh, Hubmax. Um, that little thingy that looks like a dome, that's a motion detector. I don't sell those. It's a cheap one I bought somewhere. I don't know whose brand it is. I just know that's a request to exit device. So when you walk up to the door, it'll open it, to release the mag. There's a power supply. There's a keypad. But this is called the Prox.pad. They couldn't say Prox.pad. They had to do Prox.pad so it looked like technology. Keypad with the hardened buttons. It's a plastic body with a proximity reader built in the bottom. Right now, the proximity isn't in this one. What? Oh. Well, oh, shoot. I hate technology. Somebody, uh, Joshua, please come plug me in while I do this. Oh. Can someone come please plug me in? Anybody? I'll do it. Thank you. you. Great. I know. It's before my battery dies because I don't know how to use this thing. Uh, so, keypad and the proximity reader is usually built into here. Why this doesn't have one is because you can pull out the proximity reader, install it on the wall on the outside, install this on the inside, and now you have a secure setup. Where this you could just, it has a built-in relay, you could just rip it off the wall if it was on the outside and short the wires. If you put this on the inside with the prox on the outside, now you have a secure setup. This can be standalone or integrated into that system. In standalone mode, you have 2,000 users and a bunch of other good stuff. What? It's in the top of this. Yeah, okay. I'm done with keypads. I'm done with II. Good products. If you have any questions, you guys can go to ieib.com, see all their stuff. And anywhere in this area, uh, you can contact your distributor and they'll be able to contact me if you're in the industry. And if you're not, contact your local alarm guy, locksmith, access control specialist, or friend who knows how to get stuff. In the back in the hole that says power. Oh, thank you. That's my big face. Question. What percentage of the market does IEI have in the U.S. and in Europe? Medium, good. Medium, good. So, no, ability they, of meeting them or seeing them in... As far as keypads go, they're pretty much the biggest one for keypads. As far as access control, there's a lot of competitors out there who are doing bigger. Their access control line is relatively new. Their keypad... Oh, I'm sorry. Their access control hub match line is relatively new. Their keypad line has been around for a long time and they're damn good products and out there a lot. A very, very lot. I couldn't give an exact number, but they're a lot. How what? If you're involved in an electromagnetic pulse, you have more to worry about. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to get into the details of what. Uh, uh, it, Isaac, it didn't work. I don't know, but it didn't work. Okay. What? True. Thank you. We like him. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I've seen guys uh, a while back. I don't. I'm not going to tell what safe it was. It was an electronic safe lock. I can't tell where it was. You probably heard about it. Don't tell. Okay, good. They basically took a 500 megahertz radio, jacked it up a lot, walked over to their radio, went over to the safe, went, and the thing would pop and opened up and defaulted to the regular code. Just because the, the frequency just happened to make it go woo. 
But you know what? Everything has its weaknesses. If you can find it, you're going to be a very rich person or a very jailed person. <laughs> That's the, what he's saying is you can take a 9-volt battery on a lot of safes and just grab the wires through the front. You could do that on some safe which happened to be sold at Home Depot. And I'm not going to mention cough, cough. which because it's none of my business. But a lot of the Home Depot, not to be bad with against them, safes that are rated as fire and burglar resistant are really two pieces of very thin sheet metal with a bunch of cement in the middle where I can get them open in six seconds maybe, maybe less. If I drill it, even less. Yeah, and, but if you want a good safe, go with a guard wall or start stepping up from there. That's your basic low level good security. Um, I don't rep them, they make good safes. I don't rep a safe line. If I did, I'd like to rep them, they make good safes. Above that, you're talking about real security. Uh, okay, let's get going because I'm running out of time. Time check, Isaac. Oh, I have it on my screen. Thir 35 That's minutes. Cool. No, I like that. I have it on the screen. I didn't realize that. The bottom right. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's biometrics. We're going to get to that in a second. What else did I bring? What other briefcase do you got over there? The other case. This the other black case. Okay, that one stopped working last night because the battery died. And their battery packs are rechargeable, so you just order a new one because it lasts you like five years. But we've been testing this one every day and demoing it all the time. Uh, just pull out the big plexiglass thingy. This is called IntelliKey. I haven't gone for full product training on this yet. I'm relatively new to this job, uh, so I don't want to give any false information. That's the uninteresting side. Yeah. Anyone who's familiar with locks knows what a mortise cylinder is. Mortise cylinder screws into a mortise lock. That's a mortise cylinder. They also make rim cylinders. The way this works is on the front of it, there is an infrared little beamy thingy. And it communicates with the key, which has information inside of it. Powers up the key, communicates, and the key is programmed with a chip in it. That key has no cuts in it as standard keys do. The only reason there's one cut in there is just there's a ball bearing with a spring to hold it in place. So this is an access control system you can retrofit a whole apartment building with just by throwing the mortise cylinders, drilling a little hole out the back, and throwing that big metal box on the inside. Um, I believe it's Kennedy Airport that's using this on every one of their gates. I may be, it may be JFK or LaGuardia. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's Kennedy, though. Uh, they're using them on all the gates because it needs something that was standalone, where you can just walk up, program it, and walk away. You have an audit key, which means you walk up to it, stick a key in, it reads out the last 120, no, 200 transactions. Pull it out, take that key back to your computer, put it in, and it'll give you all your transactions. I know, isn't it? Uh, it's a very, very good system. It's very, very cost effective. I can tell you guys prices because it depends who you buy from. Kind of like McDonald's, it depends which one you go to. Does it leak enough infrared to read? Does it leak enough to read? Good question. It's itty bitty, wait, pull that out real quick. Take that key and turn, turn the lock sideways. Put the key in all the way. Oh. All right, and hold it up and do the vent away thing. Between the itty bitty front of that key and the lock is where the infrared is transmitted via two little things. So if you can get in there and copy it, um, congratulations. I can't. I've also never tried. I sell it. I, I, I like being a hacker. I don't got that much time. But that would be definitely cool if you could. You can get in there? Yeah? Oh, do, do what he says, but I'd like to see you try to do it. Oh, boy. I'm going to jail for this one. Oh. Yep. Now, what he's saying is that if somebody else was so we could see from far away, what he's saying is if you pre-planned and stuck this thing on the door already, so you would refract out. Uh, there's a question back there? Yeah, how long is the how long is the code that's stored in the key? Could you brute force it? I don't know. I'll find out for you tomorrow. Uh, how much does that cost? Uh, it depends on who you buy it through, where you buy it, and who installs it. Um, I can't even give a price range. I'm not giving prices on any device because I see a hundred different prices on the same thing every day between manufacturer's price, list price, dealer pricing, and wholes if you bought it from me, you can't buy it from me. I'm a manufacturer's rep. You have to buy it from the guy I sell it to, who's the distributor, and then you have to call the installer who's going to buy from the distributor who's going to buy from me. <laughs> Welcome to business. I was an installer. I'm, I, for anyone who knows locksmithing at all, I'm a CRL. I'm also licensed by New York State as a burglar alarm installer. Uh, it's a family trade. The first time I started reading 2600, my dad caught me, took me in the basement, and showed me he had his whole tap collection. I went, wow, you're cool. <laughs> I was like, wow, my dad's cool.
And then uh, I went to Beyond Hope with him, and he sat down with Cheshire Catalyst for an hour and talked about the olden days. Uh, I don't know if Chesh remembers, but is he in here? I don't see him. Anyway, uh, that question, anybody else had a question? Okay, good. We'll go on to the next thing. That was IntelliKey. Now the stuff that everybody loves and, and asks me all kinds of technical questions at, which I go, oh. Because I, I read the specs, I read the tech stuff, but I'm not an engineer. Oh, one of those isn't screwed on, so you can take it off, but oh. don't drop it in, on the floor, because then I gotta get a new one. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> what are we doing? We gotta hook in wires for this thing. Anybody have any wires? I got wires. Okay, this product here, oh, by the way, anyone who needs product information who's seriously interested for either a business or a residential application, I will be more than happy to give product information before I leave. And I would bring a stack of my cards, but I didn't want to bring them with me to this type of environment with all you young hackers and you scary, scary people. So I'd be more than happy to give out my phone number. That's my home phone number or my cell phone. And my social security number. <laughs> and this is a Ziploc bag. Everybody buy those. Hey, where did my smart cards go? Isaac, find smart cards. And wire. Wait, plug in that end first. Okay. That goes in the left side, the thing that looks like a hole. Okay. This product, it beeped. This product is called BioScript. It's one of the most popular biometric readers out there. You've all probably seen that huge thing that looks like a toaster on the wall where you stick your whole hand in. That's called recognition systems. Um, I personally don't like a product simply because of the size. I won't really comment on it. But what that is, that's hand geometry. Uh, it's a competitive product, but I happened to have a class on it the other day. They bought me dinner, so I love the guys. Um, that's hand geometry reading where it measures the size of your fingers and the length of your fingers. And if you cut a finger off, it kind of gets pissed. Stick that in the bottom of one of them things, uh, the one all the way on your left. And I gotta get the other end, so if you don't bring it closer, we're gonna have trouble. Um, and that's this software here, that's why it says bi o b i sort of. That's sort of an I. Oh. And uh, this product, sure. This product is fingerprint biometrics. Yeah, I'm waiting for to plug it in before I can continue my sentence. Fingerprint biometrics. Fingerprint biometrics, what is biometrics? Biometrics is using something you have in your physical body, such as your fingerprint, your body shape, your voice, your retinal scan, as everybody sees in the movies. Um, a sample of anything you have in your body. And so one where you had to piss in a cup and it analyzed it. No, I didn't. That would be cool. Um, all, kinds of, all kinds of things like that. What? Yeah. All kinds of things like that are biometrics. Why use it? One, convenience. You don't have to carry a key with you. In, depending on the application. You know, wouldn't have to carry a key with you. Two, besides convenience, is security. To copy a fingerprint, everyone's seen that thing on the internet, I know, but hold on. That, okay, to copy a fingerprint or impersonate a fingerprint is very, very hard. Now, what I was about to say about the internet, if you haven't heard of it, is everybody's talking about gummy bears and your fingerprint and you take it and you stick it. Um, the guys at the, at the factory tried that on all of these. Uh, they can't get it to work, and these guys are real nerds, but they got to work on the competitor's product and other competitor's products. I won't mention which. Um, but they weren't able to get it to work for a couple of reasons. This is also has live finger detection. Before I get into the real details, it has live finger detection by uh, conductivity of your finger. So if you cut someone's finger off, it won't work. Once their finger dries out, but a fresh finger still will. <laughs> That's true. But you didn't hear it from me. And anyone who's willing to cut somebody's finger off, just take the whole hand. Come on. Have backups then. With that question? Or? With the Ziploc bag on ice, the finger will stay fresh for up to a while. But if you soak it in milk like they say when your tooth falls out, I don't know. It might work. So that's biometrics. How are we on time? 11.44. I have 15 minutes. Somebody in the back is supposed to be throwing up a hand going 15. That's that guy. Thank you, guy. That's cool. Uh, yes, guy with the hand up. Do your um, fingerprint uh, detectors, can you pull latent prints off them, or do they prevent latent from being pulled? Uh, do you mean, uh, I'll get to the question to everyone else in a second, but do you mean physically, like with uh, a dust in for the print, or do you mean electronically? Well, both optical and capacitance-based readers, some allow you to pull latents off them, so using gel lifters or other devices? If your finger is dirty and you're sticking on anything, it's going to leave a fingerprint? This doesn't have a windshield wiper? 
Well, so, some um, of your competitors have, have um, a sticky residue, so you can't pull latent prints. Uh, we do not have any sticky residue I know of. It don't feel very sticky. Um, I don't know exactly what, I know what you mean. What he's asking is, can you take, um, a, a, basically dust the thing, but he's using a gel format, I understand what he's saying, but basically saying you dust the thing and you take the fingerprint off and, and just peel it up and then you can make a copy onto like something else. Um, I guess you, uh, did you unscrew that? Oh, no, it's, oh, why'd you do that one? Why'd you take it off? You told me to take it off. Oh, hold on. Back me up here. That, li that little thing, that, that's the BioScript uh, VPass. We'll get into details on what does what in a minute. I have no idea where I was. Where's my water? <coughs> that's good stuff. New York City. I'm from Jersey. I don't get decent water anymore. We, if you drink the tap water, you die. <laughs> and so much fluoride, it gives you something. Yes, sir. What stops people from putting it off the wall and duplicating the input? Absolutely nothing but the screw. But to know the input, you would have to know the weekend output format. There's that word weekend again, but I'm not going to get into that. Which is, could be a 26-bit number or higher, depending on which system you're using. I'll show you in the software uh, how many bits it is. Uh, usually it's like a five-digit five serial number. you got to do the math. After three tries, it times out for ten minutes on my system. So you get three tries, and then you have to wait ten minutes. Three tries, do the math of how long it'll take to brute force it. I have to cover your what? Uh, no, that actually, this is just a multi-connector for the display purpose. Um, what this does is you would have a weekend output and also an RS-485 for programming. Uh, get into that one second, though. Um, are we wired in? Uh, you, can't, you can't talk to this with RS-232. It's built into software. But you're not going to be able to integrate with an access control system in RS-232 as far as I know. Uh, to beat it? If you can get the output out of it, I'd, I'd like to see it. I personally couldn't. I don't know enough about this thing to go in there and hardware hack and have it output all the fingerprints. Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely nothing. All you have to do is go in the ceiling and slice into the wires. You can do that just about any access control device you've ever seen. Unless you have a cryptified, cryptographificated, special encryptificated thing. <laughs> You guys sell those? Super duper good. What? I'm going to start selling those when you design them for me and I buy them off you. I'll be your manufacturer's rep. I'll rep you. Yes, sir. Does anybody make one? I, I don't know. I'm not that I've seen. Uh, there might be one out there if you go out of the country. There's all kinds of good stuff in Europe. Um, in Europe's over there. I don't sell to them, so I don't pay attention. I wish I did. I wish I had the time. I'm busy. Okay. Yes, Europeans do keep fingerprints on their fingers. Except for the mountain climbers. Uh, where are we? Okay. We're wired in. There's four different readers. So, of course, they give me a display with three. Would you like that? I see two. You see two? Ah, oh, come on. Where's the other one? Okay, good. They give me a display with two and a half now. Because I The three different readers are the VPass, the VSmart, and the VProx, and the fourth would be the VFlex. F-E-L-F-L-E-X, Flex. And thanks for the clapping. Okay, VPass. Real quick. Now, these all are weekend output. Uh, you can convert them to other formats if you need, but they're all weekend output by factory default. Um, and all the a separate RS-485 for communications for programming only. So you need the 485 to program it, then you unplug it and turn the computer off. Or you can just walk in through the front and plug in with a laptop if you only have a couple of units. But in a big application, you want to just all hardwire it back to one installation center. So you wouldn't have to have every person on every door walk around to every door. Okay, VPass. Up to 200 users. Only verification method is your finger. It's called a one-to-many reader. Don't ask me why. That's what my boss told me, honestly. I don't know why they call it one-to-many. Uh, it's up to 200 users. You stick your finger on, it goes beep. If we, when we plug it in, it'll go beep. It reads your finger. That's it. It sends the output. If it doesn't know you, it sends a red light. If it does know you, it puts a green light. That's it. It's simple. This is great for small offices. Let's plug this thing in. Uh, how do you work this? Uh, you sell this stuff? Yeah, I, I don't know how to put it on the thing. You don't, yeah, put the microphone there so you can hear the beeps. Come on, be Vanna. Okay, nobody can hear beeps then. There are other ones. Yeah. Okay, pretend it's beeping. You put your finger on, and it beeped. Have anybody heard it? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Because I knew my finger. If I use a finger I don't know, it makes a red light. Red, red, red light. No, red light. 
If you go to CompUSA, Radio Shack, any other computer store in the city, I don't want to be, uh, hey, look at that. I don't want to be uh, biased. You can buy this little thing by Compact that's a mouse with a fingerprint reader in it. Everybody loves them because they're 100 bucks and you stick it in there and now you got cool security. That, yeah, I can't say that. But he, he said they suck. I can't say that. But I happen to possibly. I can't say that. Um, they sample uh, 10 to 15 points off your finger and make a computer based algorithm of it. And that's how they work. Uh, if you've got a cut on your finger, those 10 to 15 points may very well be killed. And now you don't have a computer that you can use anymore, except you guys can probably just. <laughs> anyway. So they say this will send 10, 10 to 15 points off your finger. If your finger's dirty, if your finger's cut, if your finger gets cut off, my one work either if it gets cut off. But uh, that's that. R samples 340 points. And it's not actually points. It makes an algorithm out of it. So it actually samples shapes, not the points. Because points can change if your finger gets slightly dirty, but the shapes won't change. Uh, 340 shapes makes an algorithm out of it. What we're going to do is we're going to use Isaac as our test dummy for fingerprints. And now everyone will have Isaac's fingerprint on their computer. <laughs> one of these are picky, so nobody else has that? Yeah, OK. Want to use one of the, want to cut one of their fingers off and well, keep yeah, it away? I, I figure if they cut it off, they won't miss it. Yeah. So. It doesn't matter what finger you use, honestly. Uh, that's not the one we're going to read it through. We're going to read it through that one, because that one's with the wire on it. Oh, hold on, I need a card. Uh, OK, let's go through them real quick before we do that. VPass 200 users only needs a finger. VProx, up to 4,000 users, but because of the amount of users and the search time it would take with 4,000 users, you have a proximity card. Proximity card is it for security. It just happened to do that also. Proximity card turns it on and tells it what user you are. That's what it's for. The security feature is just kind of nice that it's also there. So you touch it, it turns on, then you put your finger on, and you're in. Find a little, little triangle thing on the front of it. Because I tried writing M, and I got halfway through the M and my pen died, so I never finished writing it. Uh, you touch it, and uh, it, that's it. That's VProx. It's got a built-in HID proximity reader. Thank you. Touch it. The little yellow light on top turns on. And it reads you. He's good. OK, next one is the VFlex, which is over there on the end. You can't see because it's invisible. Uh, the VFlex is just like the VProx, all the same. Just one second. Yes. Yes, these do have remote systems. They're weak at output. All these are as a reader. No, no, that don't count. <laughs> uh, all these are as a reader. They simply send out a weak end signal, and whatever that weak end signal is going to be done with by the access control panel, that just sends out the signal, the serial number that you can tap or listen to, as somebody said. I think the guy over there did. You just listen to it. It's a weak end output. It's like RS-232, 485, anything else you guys want to talk about. And it just sends it out somewhere. doesn't care what it does. Different readers do support a different number of users because... I'll get to that in one second. VPass, VProx, I'm at seven minutes. I have to go really fast right now. Oh no, we're almost done. This is cool. Um, VPass, VProx, VFlex. VFlex doesn't have the built in HID reader. What it has is a separate weekend input. So you can use a keypad, a card swipe, a weekend card, uh, a proximity card as the other method of authentication or the other identifying method rather than just Prox. If you go into a system where they already have mag stripes or they already have other things, you could use that. Or if you're going in a system where you want to use a keypad so you don't have to carry cards at all, you could do that. So be flex. It's flexible? Oh, you're so good. He said it's flexible. That's so good. V Smart uses smart card technology. Smart card technology, I know medium to low about. I know basically how it works. If you ask me technical questions, I probably can't answer them. But Isaac can. That's why I want him. Besides the Vanna White effect. Basically, the smart V Smart has unlimited users. The only limitation is the access control system you're plugging it into. Uh, Northern Computers makes it one with extremely high limit. Um, mine, I said, stops at 500 per door, so mine is 500. Northern, I think, is like really, really high. <laughs> so with that, uh, the reason why is on here the fingerprint is stored internally in this unit. On here the fingerprint is stored internally in this unit. On here the fingerprint is stored in the smart card. That's the five minutes thing, right? That the five minutes. That's what he said, and he's waving. So it'd be smart. Smart stores the information on the smart card uh, via stuff Isaac can tell you about if we have time. And that way the database is just stored on here. All this has is basically an encrypted password where you take your card, you bring it up, it says, okay, you have my password, send me the fingerprint, sends the fingerprint over and compares it. That's how the V smart works. This one simply puts your fingerprint and compares what's in record. And that's the product line. Now let's enroll somebody. Uh, and we're going to show you why. Any volunteers? <laughs> now we're going to roll something. We're going to show why the Mafia likes this product. 
Okay, these are all the ones already installed. Uh, this is my card, but we're not going to play with this one because I don't want to mess it up because I have to do it later. Where are the other proxy cards? Grab one. Read the number off the back to me. 19296. 19296. Oh, that's a good one. Delete. Okay, we're in the software. Basic, okay, how do we do this? Real quick. Close this too. Clicky, clicky. Open the software. All it configures itself, reads the, the whatever you're connected to. If you have multiple readers, it's another story. We're not getting into that. Click on Template Manager. Quick enroll. Template ID number. You're going to get that from Reader. So you take the card and you touch it to the thingy. Oh, cool, it worked. It's got, no, you can take it away. You just have to touch it real quick. Oh, let's do it again just to prove how quick it is. Re from Reader? Uh, it's, it's processing now. I hate computers so much. Come on, don't you guys have like one of them old TRS-80s or something I could use for this? No, nah, it's Windows XP. It's my work computer. I can't do anything with it. Oh, there we go. I'll take the card away. Click from Reader. I'll touch the thing real quick. That's it. Take it away. You got it. Then you would click and roll. Place finger on... It's going to be hard, so turn the thing around so you can reach it. Uh, what you want to do is lock your rid your finger on here. Yeah. Okay. Can you reach? Hold. Remove finger. I'm cool. I can do stuff like this back. Okay. <laughs> well, this should be showing the image, but because yeah, of Windows XP, it's not. <laughs> Well, this is why the Mafia likes it. It should be showing an image, but because the computer is Windows XP, it sucks. Um, exit out. Let's do that again. Quick enroll. From reader, touch it. There you go. Take it away. Enroll. Place finger on sensor. Hold finger. There we go. Okay. You want to get three or better stars on both of these. This is the image of his actual figure. Now you can steal his soul. This is what the computer sees. This is what's stored. So if you take this and do a printout for the FBI, they don't have this. They can't track you by that. That's why the Mafia loves it. Uh, and various other people who don't want to use things that actually store their fingerprint. Because if this is all you have, you can't copy this. You can't, well, you can copy it, but you can't do anything useful with it. Because you take this and you look at my finger, or his finger, it's not the same. So once you click and roll, did that, now you click accept. Pick the finger just for record usage. Right pinky. Right pinky. Realistically, this doesn't matter. It's just for um, recording what you used. I, Z, A, A, C. Good work. Cool. Template index, don't worry about that. It's something for the future when software becomes better programmed. Maybe guys, programmers? <laughs> yeah. um, user ID, leave there. You save to the current unit. Security threshold, what that is, is just your different security levels. Oh, very high. Very high? Yeah, that's me. No, because then you have to walk around and make sure your finger's really on there good. Oh. oh. Medium is the average. That just checks how many points in your finger it's going to actually use. Uh, I usually leave it on medium. I've never turned it anything else. There's no real reason to. <coughs> Only thing is, if your customer says, oh, it's a nuclear missile room thing or pharmacy or something, you might want to go higher. Select your finger, save the current unit, and you're done, and you exit out. And now when Isaac goes over, touches the card, and puts his finger on it, it might work. But if he's upside down, he might not have it on the straight. Okay, Can, it turned orange. Turned orange. Ooh. Oh, turned red. You're not on there straight here. Turn the thing sideways. It, as long as your finger is set on there straight, but because he was upside down before, he yeah. probably didn't roll his finger straight. So let's re-roll him with his finger on there straight. Turn the thing around. Hang on, I can do this. Now, turn the thing around so you can roll your finger right. First off, I've never had... Okay. Let's go. Click and roll. Click and roll. Get it from reader. Take it away. Roll. Place finger on center. Okay, accept. That pinky. Bang. I Z A A C. Save the current unit. Yes. Exit. Oh. Exit. Try your finger. You gotta put the card in first. Oh yeah. Work now? Yay! Good, turn around and do it. Can you get to see if you can work upside down? Everybody clap. How am I on time? Not, not from everybody, from official. One minute! Oh my god! Okay, golly golly gee! Um, it works, see? Uh, but being upside down didn't work before. What is so, that uh, I'll buy you lunch. Cool! Uh, and that's access control for you in a quick standpoint. Anyone who has any questions, anyone who wants to buy stuff from me, I love you people. Um, since I can't sell directly to you, I will put you in contact with the right people. I will also give you product information. I also do lots and lots of other stuff, including video systems and alarm systems and all kinds of other stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Any questions? Ah, definitely. Thank you. Anyone who needs to contact me can just go to...
Oh, one more moment. Um, do you have to get right out of here? Okay, we'll talk one second. Okay, great. Uh, that's my email address for anyone who needs to contact me. Uh, please do not send me massive amounts of porn. It's a problem. Okay, yeah, yes. I'll do my best to give you a call. If not, uh, you can, yeah, I'll try my best. I'm really dumb. I forget things. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Next. Do I do a computer login? There's an OEM uh, application where you can get the fingerprints and divide, design into your own stuff uh, with a uh, development kit. Uh, you can get that if you call a Bioscript directly. Uh, what? I don't know how to turn off the mic. That's the guy back there. So they're still recording me. No, I'll do this. Everyone can listen to the questions, so we may learn something else. Okay, uh, so yes, there is an OEM module. No, they do not make a computer interface currently. Uh, it? Cool. Nice. Thank you very, very much. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Uh, go on the internet and look for it. They're everywhere. They can't get them off my damn pop-ups. I can't. They keep popping up on my screen. Video cameras are wireless. If, if exactly, if you want to get a good one, talk to a camera guy, a camera specialist. You're not gonna be able to get it yourself unless you go to a distributor. Uh, otherwise, no, I do not rep that product. Can you get it with the temperature sensor? No, but it should be easy enough to wire in. Uh, no, it, this is a fingerprint device. They also have the handprint. If you install them both right next to each other, that's between you wiring up. Uh, I guess it could be done with a good access system. Yeah, yeah, I guess it could be done with a good access system. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Separation of databases is separate because the fingerprint database is one, the access control is another. Recording? Mm -hmm. Yes. Take a question and answer is good. Okay. Are you doing, um, if you hack into my database, you have my weekend output, which means you can rip it off the wall and you can simply insert any keypad and download my weekend serial number. You can rip it off the wall and put it in the weekend serial number. Yes. Very true. Um, but then how to clone it might be hard. If you could do that, uh, IR copying. That would be cool. If you could do it, um, contact me off the stage. No problem. We gotta clean up. Everybody form a line at the end. We'll all talk to Isaac, because Isaac's smart. Yes. 